Hello everyone. This is the ninth part of the story Game of Thrones, The Prideful One. Chapter 46 Two months later, the news of my marriage to Daenerys spread like a pandemic across the realm, which in turn made me the number one enemy of Westeros to some. Assassination attempts were a common occurrence now, merchants and other individuals would try to end Daenerys' life every now and then. The reason behind this, Varys. When he offered me a deal, I knew he wanted something from me, I initially thought he wanted to put Viserys on the throne or any Targaryen for that matter, I was correct in this assumption, what I didn't know until a month ago, was there was another Targaryen roaming free. I really should have read the books more in depth, I sighed as I read the letter Varys intended for Illyrio. Aegon Targaryen, or how they call him, the young Griff, Varys had somehow managed to keep this little secret away from me. But now that I knew, what to do with him? What to do? Should I kill him? I knew close to zero about him, for all I knew he could be a great guy, but it didn't matter if he was the best person in the world, I wasn't going to give up my plans of conquering Westeros and getting thrown. I suppose, I could offer him what I had offered everyone so far, you either submit or die, he will have the choice. Now with Varys, my decision was set the moment someone tried to poison Daenerys, I don't care how much he has to keep his cover, I will kill the bald bastard and make him regret ever making an enemy out of me, if I wasn't as informed as I was, Daenerys would be dead and so would be my babies. No matter what he was thinking when he revealed our information, or why he did it, what mattered was that he put in danger the life of my unborn children and wife, and for that he would die. Painfully. Tywin Lannister, another soon-to-be-dead man, they really oversell the old lion, he really thinks Gregor Clegane will even see a glimpse of Daenerys, he will die before he can even breath close to her. We are leaving V's Dothrak today, right? Daenerys entered my tent, with her fourth month baby bump showing. Every morning she would wake up even more beautiful than the last day, shining like my own little star. Yes, I smiled as I kneeled to kiss her bountiful baby bump. We have been four months here, we have everything we need, but if you feel like staying, we could. I don't want to tire you. I'm pregnant, not made out of crystal, Daenerys giggled, brushing my hair with her fingers. Is there a difference? I teased. Daenerys just laughed at my tease as she added her own. I might be made out of crystal, but look at you, the strongest man in the kneeling to my fragile pregnant feet. I chuckled, not quite ready to lose. I, but I recall you getting on your knees pretty often for me. All right, let's call it a tie. Daenerys laughed. Fair enough. I nodded as I stood up giving her a kiss. We should be leaving tonight. Let your handmaidens know, all right? Yes. Daenerys nodded in agreement as she started to walk out of the tent, by the way, will I ride my horse, or? abso fucking lately not, you will ride in a cart so padded with comfort you will feel you are floating, I didn't know if riding a horse was a good idea with all the movement this brought. Alrighty, Daenerys chuckled as she caressed her belly, your papa is quite overprotective, isn't he? I am, and I wear that shit with honor, I laughed. By the way, can you tell your ravens to stop trying to brood my belly? Daenerys added, trying hard not to laugh. I wake up every morning with ten to twenty ravens on my belly. Caw! No brooding? How in the hell will your eggs hatch then? No brooding this generation. I swear! Caw! HRMMM brooding we will, stop us you can't, YRSSS. Caw! What they said. We will continue with the extra brooding to ensure they are strong ravens caw. Unfortunately. I laughed as I shrugged, is out of my hands. Very well, Daenerys sighed, I will see you later. I continued to arrange all the matters I had to before leaving, besides me were the eggs I had bought so long ago, my raven still brooding them. Perhaps it was time to try and hatch them, I was called the son of the fire, the champion of the light by the god of fire himself, and those titles fit perfectly with this situation. Or at least that is what I wanted to believe. I remembered from the books that dragon eggs are notoriously difficult to hatch, and even though they can maintain the spark of life inside of them for decades if not centuries. The secret key to hatching them seems to involve some form of blood magic, as the house words of the Targaryens hint, it requires fire and blood. And considering how Daenerys hatched them, I had a general idea how to do it, to do so, I would have to burn the eggs in roaring flames, while another creature is simultaneously being burned alive, a life in exchange for a life. Fire and blood. 
Dragons in the wild probably just used prey animals to fulfill this purpose. But I wasn't sure an animal would work, besides they were extremely loyal to me. So human sacrifice will do the trick quite nicely, it was at least worth the shot. Maybe I could put Viserys in the flames, it would certainly be interesting to see if he can burn or not. Time to burn these eggs, I chuckled. Caw! You will not Gordon Ramsay our babies. Caw! I sighed. I would now have to explain to them why I wanted to do it, they had grown quite protective of the eggs. Allow me to explain, I chuckled. Ned Stark point of view. The seed is strong, John Aries' last words. I had finally found out what he meant, Robert didn't have any lawful children, Cersei had cheated on him. I was glad I had sent my daughters back to Winterfell a few months back, for what I had to do would bring the realm to chaos. And here I was sitting by myself waiting for someone to confront the lies. Cersei, the person I wanted to talk to arrived and walked up to me, you're in pain. Cersei pointed to my shoulder, mocking my injury after the altercation I had with her brother, her lover. I shift uncomfortably with my cane as I slowly stand, I've had worse, my lady. Cersei feigned interest as she added, perhaps it's time to go home. The South doesn't seem to agree with you. This wasn't going nowhere, so time to push it, I know the truth John Aaron died for. Cersei eyed me for a second with her eyes showing mixed emotions between worry and pride, do you, Lord Stark? Is that why you called me here, to pose me riddles? I noticed her fear, but my eyes drifted to the bruise she had on her face. I inquired pointing at her bruise, has Robert done this before? Cersei smiled, as she shook her head, Jamie would have killed him. My brother is worth a thousand of your friends. I glared at her, your brother, or your lover? Cersei simply smirked at me, making me realize I was right on my hunch. She then stood up proudly, as she added, the Targaryens wed brothers and sisters for three hundred years to keep bloodlines pure. Jamie and I are more than brother and sister. We shared a womb. We came into this world together. We belong together. All of this was starting to make sense, it wasn't Tyrion who pushed Bran, it was one of them. My son saw them and they tried to silence him still, my son saw you with him. I said with my blood boiling in anger. Cersei took a deep breath nodding as she added, Do you love your children? What kind of stupid question was that, with all my heart? I answered not skipping a beat. Cersei smiled, no more than I love mine. I scoffed, and they're all Jamie's. My comment made Cersei laugh, thank the gods. In the rare event that Robert leaves his horse for long enough to stumble drunk into my bed, I finish him off in other ways. In the morning, he doesn't remember. Cersei always hated Robert, and this was her way to make him pay, by making him fathered kids that weren't his, you've always hated him. Cersei eyed me in disbelief, as she added, hated him? I worshipped him. Every girl in the Seven Kingdoms dreamed of him, but he was mine by oath. And when I finally saw him on our wedding day in the September of Baylor, lean and fierce and black-bearded, it was the happiest moment of my life. Then that night he crawled on top of me, stinking of wine and did what he did, what little he could do, and whispered in my ear, Lyanna. Your sister was a corpse and I was a living girl and he loved her more than me. I can understand her pain somewhat, but what she did was unforgivable, when the king returns from his hunt, I'll tell him the truth. You must be gone by then, you and your children. I will not have their blood on my hands. Go as far away as you can, with as many men as you can. Because wherever you go, Robert's wrath will follow you. Cersei laughed, and she spat, and what of my wrath, Lord Stark? You should have taken the realm for yourself. Jaime told me about the day King's Landing fell, he was sitting in the Iron Throne and you made him give it up. All you needed to do was climb the steps yourself. Such a sad mistake. I had her before I shook my head. I've made many mistakes in my life, but that wasn't one of them. Cersei smiled coldly, oh, but it was. When you play the Game of Thrones, you win or you die. There is no middle ground. With that she left, I could only hope she would take my advice and leave. Caw, he dead, he just ye ten himself, caw. Chapter 47 after gathering all my belongings and ensuring Daenerys had the best and most comfortable cart to travel around Essos this world could offer, I left with my new Kalasar to hunt down the remaining Dothraki tribes. I had also constructed a very detailed security team to ensure her safety, 
with a personal guard of 500 men at her call. That, of course, without counting ravens and horses. I wasn't worried about the assassins, they after all, were a bunch of idiots trying to become lords, and this was their ticket to the easy life, or so they thought, killing us was harder than killing Robert himself. They were bound to fail, but even though I knew that their failure was imminent, anger fueled my very core consuming my soul in a spiral of hate and anger, the idea of Daenerys dying, the idea of holding the lifeless bodies of my children in my arms, as it impossible as it was, infuriated me beyond human comprehension. Torturing the assassins before killing was a quick relief of this feeling, but it wasn't enough, I would not be satisfied until all of those who dare to target my family are destroyed. Not like this wasn't any different to my original plan, no, it was the same, but this time my drive was stronger, more aggressive, my reasons to take the throne had changed, no. They were the same, but I had a few extra reasons to do it now. Caw! We located the next biggest colossar. I turned to see in amusement the raven that had landed in the head of my horse, bowing politely. How far away? I inquired. A week in horse or so, caw. Right now I had to focus on getting these savages under me. I would have more than enough time to get my well-deserved retribution. They better enjoy this time I'm away, for it is more vibrant than the darkness that awaits them. Let's go. I ordered my men, changing our course. Daenerys' point of view. So much has changed since the day I met him, I was afraid of him at first of what represented being his. Yet, he made me feel like nothing in the world mattered, only us. And little by little I found myself craving his company, his laugh, his stupid sense of humor, how he smelled, how he kissed me in the mornings before leaving. And without even noticing it, I fell head down in love. He made it so easy, so easy to love him. And here we are, I smiled, touching my belly softly, but the flutter of many wings snapped me out of my train of thought. Behind me there were around twenty ravens, all staring at me intensely. You guys want to brood my belly, right? I inquired, a few months ago talking with animals would have been ludicrous, but now, not so much. Caw! The ravens nodded in unison. And you won't take a no for an answer? I chuckled. Caw caw! The ravens nodded confirming my suspicions. Back to Ronard's point of view. With my new army, fighting the other Dothraki tribes got exponentially easier, the Dothraki weren't known for their strategic battle forms. I had just conquered another tribe with 10,000 warriors. Why would they fight someone with an army of 50,000 soldiers with those numbers? I don't know, well I did, Dothraki quite straightforward, they would go like idiots into battle, and try to destroy anything on their way with pure strength. Normally this would work if they had bigger numbers. But they didn't. So after killing their call, once again I had increased my numbers and thanks to the idiot blood riders that followed him I finally had my fire sacrifice to try and hatch my dragons. How are you doing? I said as I entered my wife's cart, nothing she was covered in ravens brooding her belly. Your ravens are brooding me, Daenerys glared at me playfully, what do you think? I think they are doing a wonderful job, I shrugged. So how many soldiers do we have now? Daenerys sighed. I could see she wanted to laugh but was too stubborn to do it. Well, I think almost 60,000, I hummed, I hadn't really counted how many we have exactly but it was along those lines, how are my babies doing? Fine, your feathery friends are seeing to it, Daenerys chuckled. Caw! We are ensuring they get the best brooding. Caw! Caw! We are giving them the brooding they deserve. The ravens brooding her pregnant belly were proudly stating their awesome brooding skills. I can see that, I chuckled as I approached to kiss her, I wanted to tell her soon I would try and hatch the dragon's eggs, one of her dreams was to see a dragon, but if this didn't work it would only disappoint her, so I would wait until I had those babies out of their eggs, well, I'm off to rearrange some stuff, I just got more men into my banners and before the logistics of all this shit comes back to bite me in the ass, I need to do it. Take care, Daenerys smiled giving me a kiss, don't come back late, I need my personal pillow. Oh that sounds like quite the invitation, I smirked at her getting a playful punch to my shoulder, my, my, that pregnancy is making you quite volatile. I suppose, Daenerys giggled. Two blood riders, three eggs and lots, lots of fire. I had all the ingredients to hatch them, according to what I saw and read of it in my past life. But just to be sure I went the extra mile, 
I replicated the exact same thing Daenerys did on the show to hatch them. I tied the blood riders making sure they couldn't move, putting the eggs above them as I set the wood beneath them in fire. As I did so, the voice of the god of light resonated in my head. Caw! My babies. Son of the fire, champion of the light. A part of me wanted to touch the fire, as it was starting to spread, logically I knew this would burn me, but I still wanted to do it. Maybe I was crazy, maybe I had been affected beyond repair in this world, or maybe. Maybe there was a reason for my desire to touch the fire. Son of the fire, champion of the light, don't be afraid. Fuck it, I know it's stupid, but I'm going to try. I thought knowing full well this was a bad idea, but if I didn't I would forever regret not trying it. But I wasn't an idiot, I would not dive into the fire like it was a swimming pool, I would first try with a finger and see. As I dipped my finger in the fire, flinching preemptively, I noticed that I wasn't feeling any pain. Surprised by this I dipped my entire hand and all I felt was warmth, instead of the pain I was expecting. Well, that solves the son of the fire thing. I chuckled as I walked into the fire as if it was the most normal thing. My men started to panic at this. I'm okay. I'm apparently fireproof now. The blood riders on the other hand were screaming in pain, the fire burning their skin, scorching them to the other world. As their screams of pain faded into the background, I focused on the eggs, touching them, feeling the warmth inside of them, the spark of life growing. A life for a life, they would hatch by blood and fire. Only after the blood riders died, and their screams stopped, the egg started to crack, the black egg first, the dragon that would have been originally known as Drogo. Crack. Hello, little fella, I said extending my hand to the baby dragon that looked at me curiously, his mind still undeveloped and not sharing much but emotions, he was currently imprinting with me. Soon after his two brothers followed suit, cracking their eggs, by this point, not Drogo was on my shoulder hissing. How about we go and see mommy? I chuckled as I offered my other arm to the other two baby dragons. Are our babies okay? Caw. I told you you would Gordon Ramsay our babies. Caw. Chapter 48. Two months later. Dragons, they are quite, spoiled since birth, hissing and demanding attention at all times, be it left or right I would see them climbing up my legs to demand my absolute attention. Not gonna lie, they were quite adorable, cute little rascals. Daenerys was more than happy to see them and have them, she was beaming with happiness of the highest degree, petting and showering with affections the three newborn's dragons, she was so excited she had yet to ask, how in the hell did I hatch them? The three dragons reacted to Daenerys differently, the two smallest ones were shy at first, but after some food and bribes they relented to her affections. Except for not Drogo, he didn't like Daenerys yet, I could feel his emotions flaring when she was near me, in other words he was jealous, he was posed as Eva to the point of being stupid. Call we have located the last big Dothraki tribe, a raven informed as he flew into my lap, getting a hiss from not Drogo. The raven simply responded by literally bitch slapping not Drogo. Caw. Don't hiss at me young chick. Note, chick is how you call a baby raven. Hiss. Slap. Hiss. Slap. Hiss. Slap. Hiss. That continued for about 10 minutes, but in the end my little package of anger decided to give up, since I hatched these babies, I had almost conquered all the remaining Dothraki tribes since the day I hatched them, and today I would finally get all the Dothraki under my banner, and start on my next item on the agenda, the free cities. But for now, names. What to call these babies, Daenerys wanted to name one like her brother, not Shitstain, Regal. My ravens, requested to name the other one, and being that I thought it was hilarious and not really troubling for me I allowed, so they called not Viserion, Crow with a Q. And with that, all that was left was to name, not Drogo, I pondered with names for a long time, something memorable. Naltharion, yes that was it. Strong and with meaning behind it, yes it came from a video game but honestly it was awesome, the dragon of earth, the bringer of the cataclysm. Naltharion, I petted the newborn baby dragon, who somehow even with his undeveloped cognitive abilities was happy and felt proud of his name. The last big Dothraki tribe has a little bit above 11,000 riders compared to my big army composed of 80,000 soldiers made the battle one-sided and predictable. Killing the call and his blood riders, at this point wasn't even a challenge. 
I still had other minor tribes to conquer, that together formed around another 20,000 riders, but they were scattered around the lands, separated in the few thousands, and for now, what I had would have to do. Well, time to move out here, I sighed, finally I had finished what I started, but I wonder how is West Eros doing? Sansa's stark point of view. Father had sent me to Winterfell a few months ago, and I had happily accepted, Joffrey was nothing to what I originally expected from him, he was a little monster, feeding on others' suffering, leeching from the pain and agony around him. I was angry at father, I wasn't sure I hated him, but it was close, I was happy with the prospect of being married to Ronard, but now he had married. And like Ronard said, father once again bent over for Robert. But I wasn't angry enough to want or desire his death, he was still my father. And the last thing I told him before coming was, I hate you. I wanted to fix that. Now, he was arrested, for treason. And there was a big chance I would lose him forever, there was a big chance the last interaction I had with him was that. I'm tired of feeling like this, I teared up in my bed, helpless, useless, please gods, save my father, please help my brother, please I beg you. I cried as I wished with all my heart that the gods blessed and protected my brother's army that was marching south to get father back. Tywin Lannister point of view. Ned Stark had been arrested for spouting the things that in nature were nonsensical. My grandson wanted him death, Cersei apparently was the only one that saw the bigger picture this time. She wanted to keep him alive, so did I. We had nothing to hold the North over, Ned Stark while in his idiocy had foreseen somewhat these events, and as so to avoid his daughters being used against him and the North, he sent them back to Winterfell. At least that's what I wanted to believe but I hardly believe the Honorable Wolf is smart enough to play so far ahead. But regardless of whether he knew or not, he had outplayed us, and if Joffrey killed him, we would have a full-blown war, and nothing to hold them down. And that is why we needed him alive. To keep the North in check. They had already derailed enough, marching south with an army. Like always I had to fix my family's mistakes. I'm going to King's Landing, I announced leaving my solar, leaving my cousins confused. Ned Stark point of view. I was thrown in a dungeon soon after I confronted the queen for her infidelities, it's been almost two months since they threw me here, with nothing but rats to keep me company. Lord Stark, the despicable voice of Varys echoed in the dungeon. What are you doing here? You can't betray more can't you? I scoffed. I never allied myself to you, Lord Stark. Varys sighed. So what are you doing here? I inquired annoyed at his presence. Looking to help you, but be aware I'm no hero, Varys replied nonchalantly, with a sigh through the bars of my prison. I scoffed at that, can you free me from this pit? Varys hummed at that, I could. But will I? Number. As I said, I'm no hero. I laughed bitterly at that, what do you want them, how do you pretend to help me? Tell me, no stories, no riddles. Tell me, what do you want? Varys sighed, peace. Did you know that your son is marching south with an army of Northmen? Loyal lad, fighting for his father's freedom. Rob was marching south, looking for war, why would he do something so foolish, Rob? He's just a boy. Varys chuckled, boys have been conquerors before. But the man giving Cersei sleepless nights is the king's, the late king's brother. Lord Stannis has the best claim to the throne. He's a proven battle commander and he is utterly without mercy, and of course Lord Ronard with his Dothraki army and dragons I hear. I scoffed, Stannis Baratheon is Robert's true heir. The throne is his by rights. Ronard might have an army, but he wasn't the heir not had any right M. Varys smiled, you helped the Baratheons rise, you helped Robert sit on the throne when he had no birthright, don't patronize me with that Lord Stark, it would be a shame to throw your life away. Cersei is no fool. She knows a tamed wolf has more uses. He was right in one thing, I had helped Robert sit on the throne, but if he thought that of all the persons in the world I would serve that despicable woman, he was out of his marbles, you want me to serve the woman who murdered my king, who butchered my men, who crippled my son? Varys shook his head, with a victorious smile, I want you to serve the realm. Tell the queen you will confess your vile treason, tell your son to lay down his sword and proclaim Joffrey as the heir, and you will live. I laughed at that, you think my life is some precious thing to me? That I would trade my honor for a few more years of, of what? 
You grew up with actors, you learned their craft and you learned it well. But I grew up with soldiers. I learned how to die a long time ago. Varus smiled once again, pity. Such a pity. Varus moves to leave, but drops a key close to me. I owe the young bear a favor, which was originally intended for your daughters, but you saved them before I could, and while I'm no Lannister, I always pay my debts. Ronard had foreseen so far ahead of this game of schemes, and even after all that happened, he had gone out of his way to ensure the safety of my daughters. Farewell Lord Stark, farewell. Varys said as he left the dungeon, the guards that were guarding my cell, were dead, I was partially free. I owe my life to Ronard, I sighed. Yes you do motherfucker caw. Now scram before they fuck you, unbeknownst to him, a raven that for some reason had an eye patch was watching him. Chapter 49 I had completed step one of my complicated mission, and it was time to move forward with the next part of the plan, conquering the free cities. The free cities are nine powerful cities, each one with their own government and army to protect themselves from invading forces, not all of them are powerful. But they all are full of riches mostly because they engage in extensive trade contact with the Seven Kingdoms and other lands, and are known for practicing slavery. Unlike the Dothraki, they would prove a bit more challenging to conquer. All I knew about the free cities historically speaking is that they were founded centuries ago as colonies of the Valyrian Freehold. But like they say, every empire comes to an end, and when the Freehold and its dragonlords were destroyed in the Doom of Valyria 400 years ago, and the empire fell, the free cities emerged from the dust as autonomous entities, dominating much of the land between the River Rhoyne and the western coast of the continent. Volantis being the oldest and most populous one, and at one point the most powerful of the free cities, but time had passes and while still formidable, it had been gradually eclipsed by the growing power of Bravos. So now, I had to prioritize my targets and moves accordingly. Bravos the most powerful and northerly of free cities, led by the Sea Lord. It is home to the influential Iron Bank of Bravos and the secret of Assassin's Guild known as the Faceless Men. And my hardest target, they had enough money to hire an army as big as mine and destroy mine if I played my cards the wrong way, which put this little bitch at the end of my list. Liss was an easy target and the first on my list, it was located on an island in the Summer Sea, which would allow me to use my Krakens, to destroy their formidable navy. Mir would be my second target, for how easy it would be to attack it, after all, Mir was a seaport on an arm of the narrow sea close to Lys, which allowed me to also use my Krakens. They were famous for their skilled craftsmen and their products, particularly optical lenses and fine lace. Lys and Mir have been bitter rivals for centuries, perpetually fighting over the disputed lands between them, and I like a good Samaritan will end that dispute once and for all, I deserve some praise, don't I? Heis? Nalfarian tilted his head in confusion seeing the map I was using. You will one day burn those who oppose our family, I chuckled, getting a hiss of agreement, should I be worried I felt agreement on that hiss, nah. Tyrosh like Lys was an easy target, an island ready for the taking, and due to its location between the stepstones, disputed lands, and west arrows, it is a major place for hiring the services of various professional sellsword companies, to serve in the various conflicts of these different regions, but in these case they would get assimilated into my army. Norvos, there was nothing special about them, which put them as my next target on the list, mostly because they were close to the last targets. Pentos, the city where the fat man Illyrio lives, it's a major seaport, land-based, and one of the most vulnerable cities, with no protection against the Dothraki raids, when and how I would conquer it was unknown and really non-important, but conquering it would be a good way to stop Varys and his little plan to support the young Griff. Kohor was among the most interesting targets on my list. It was located in the immense forest of Kohor near the edge of the Dothraki Sea, which was beneficial now that I had my Dothraki with me. It would be easy to attack them, but they were really good on stopping raids and armies, they had their own unsullied army to protect themselves, making them perhaps one of the hardest cities to conquer on my list, but I was really interested in them, for they were known for their immensely skilled blacksmiths, who can even reforge Valyrian steel, something that would come handy for the long night. Hiss. Naltherian was especially interested in Kohor. Yes, you will help daddy to mass produce Valyrian steel, I laughed, if that's even possible, of course. Hiss. Naltherian hissed, as he curled up inside my fur jacket to sleep. This will be incredibly creepy once you grow to be several times bigger than me, 
I chuckled, imagining a fully grown dragon trying to use me as a pillow. With a sigh, I continued making my list, getting to the last city, Volantis, the most populous and corrupt city, leading the market on slaves, like Bravos, they would pose a challenge, but infinitely minor to Bravos for they did have as much money as them to keep me at bay, and they would be the last to fall, well. Not really the last, for Bravos and Lorith would be the last ones, after Volantis. Lys. Mir. Tyrosh. Norvos. Pentos. Coor. Volantis. Lorith. Bravos. My list was complete, I would conquer the cities in that order, and then, then I would get the fucking throne, and of course, I would kill Varus. Cockless bastard. If he thinks I will let him double cross me, just because he is the fat and bald version of Kent he is sorely mistaken. Well, it seems I'm trapped, I chuckled realizing that if I moved I would wake up Neltharion, and like a cat you must not do that. I woke up next morning to see Neltharion being fed by the ravens like he was a chick, and surprisingly he wasn't biting their heads off while they regurgitated the meat and corn inside his tiny dragon mouth. Caw! Eat so you can be a healthy raven caw! The scene was just precious, which gave me a reason and the time to leave, Neltharion noticed this and ran after me, climbing me like I was a fucking scratch post. Hey, buddy I'll be back, the ravens will take care of you for a bit, okay? I chuckled, still surprised he was so attached to me. His Neltharion hissed like he wasn't sure if to believe me or not. I promise, I chuckled, wondering if I would have these weird conversations with him once he was fully grown. After a second of deep consideration, Neltharion relented and went back to the ravens, leaving me with a hiss that translated to, you better come back. Ha ah, adorable, I chuckled leaving the tent. I explained to my generals what was our next step, the Dothraki were more than happy, saying I was a true stallion for deciding to take the world under my hoof, nice. The Ironborn were also excited, for I was making everybody pay the iron price. Frankly I should have seen it coming. Daenerys, on the other hand, already knew about my plans, and knew that while I loved her she could not stop me from doing this, she while she wanted to conquer Westeros but she didn't want me to do the same here, for she feared I would lose my life but she understood my reasons. Are we overreaching? Daenerys asked worriedly. We must do this, I reassured her. Ned Stark point of view. I still had yet to escape King's Landing, I remembered that Arya told me about the secret passages that she had found while playing around the castle, and thanks to that I had been roaming in them, avoiding getting captured. I had yet to find the right passage that would lead me outside the castle walls, outside this wretched place. I will soon be back home, so wait for me, I sighed, things might not look good now, but I was certainly better than a couple days ago. There was also another matter at hand, I honored my life, and I had to pay that debt. What are you still doing here, Ka? I swear these motherfuckers keep getting dumber and dumber, the raven that had been following me Ka, like he wanted to tell me something. This marks the end of part 9 of the story Game of Thrones, the prideful one. Thank you for listening. Please like the video and hit the subscribe button to listen more. Hit the bell icon to get notified of all the new content uploaded to the channel ASAP.